A three-judge federal appeals panel ruled two to one today against banning same-sex marriage in California. The decision upheld a lower court that found the ban, known as Proposition 8, violates the Constitution's Equal Protection Clause. NewsHour correspondent Spencer Michaels begins our coverage from San Francisco. It was another victory for supporters of same-sex marriage in California, and they celebrated outside the federal courthouse in San Francisco. Opponents of Prop 8, Felicia Madriz and Allison Spencer, said the appeals court decision was important. Absolutely. You know, this is one more step to equal rights, and hopefully federally it'll be recognized. We're really excited and emotionally moved, obviously, and hopefully this will put the nail in there. On the other hand, backers of Proposition 8 insisted the fight is not over. In a statement, the National Organization for Marriage called the decision predictable as well as sweeping and wrong-headed. But it also said, we have every confidence we will prevail. Nearly everyone agrees that the Prop 8 case will eventually end up before the United States Supreme Court on appeal. But before that happens, the losers in this case, those supporting Proposition 8, could ask for a hearing before a 10-judge panel, a so-called on-bank hearing. The Prop 8 battle goes back to November 2008, when California voters passed it with 52 percent of the vote. The ballot measure banned same-sex marriage just five months after the state Supreme Court had allowed it under then-existing law. But in August of 2010, federal judge Vaughn Walker struck down the ban. He ruled that gays and lesbians have a constitutional right to marry. Later, the judge announced he is gay and in a long-term relationship. Lawyers supporting Prop 8 argued he should have disclosed his relationship or recused himself. The appeals court said today there was no evidence that Walker was biased in his handling of the case. In the meantime, other states are tackling the gay marriage issue this election year. Those with pending legislation or ballot measures in 2012 include Washington State, Minnesota, North Carolina, Maryland, New Jersey, New Hampshire, and Maine. They and others will be watching to see the ultimate outcome in the California legal battle. Today's ruling is limited to California, but in a 128-page opinion, the federal panel <coughs> emphasized the broader constitutional principle. Judge Stephen Reinhardt, writing for the majority, concluded Proposition 8 serves no purpose and has no effect other than to lessen the status and human dignity of gay men and lesbians in California. We get two views now of the decision and its fallout. David Boys is one of the attorneys for the American Foundation for Equal Rights, which supports same-sex marriage. And John Eastman is chairman of the board of the National Organization for Marriage, which argues same-sex marriage is not protected under the Constitution. I want to start by asking, reading to both of you gentlemen, something else from the court's decision today and ask you to respond. The court also said that California used the initiative power to target a minority group and withdraw a right that it possessed without a legitimate reason for doing so. Pretty tough language, David Boyce. It was very tough language. This was a great day for America, great day for California in particular, but a great day for America and everybody who believes in equal rights. What the Ninth Circuit said was the Court of Appeals said is that we're not going to tolerate any longer governmental discrimination against our gay and lesbian citizens. And they said it in very emphatic terms. And although the decision is, as you say, technically limited to California, the principles that it articulates mean that eventually we're going to have marriage equality throughout the United States. And people need to get into the 20th century, if not the 21st century, and recognize that that kind of discrimination is over with. John Eastman, what's your reaction to the, to the strong language in this ruling? Well, Judge Reinhardt has, has staked an awful lot on, on his opinion in trying to compare this to Colorado's Amendment 2 and saying that this initiative did absolutely nothing except remove a longstanding right uh, for gays and lesbians to marry. Of course, it was not longstanding. The California mm. Supreme Court had made that up just several months earlier. And Proposition 8 is not so limited. Uh, it applies to one man and one woman. That means plural marriages are also illegal under Proposition 8 in California. Uh, so the notion that this, the, the only purpose of this was animus towards gay and lesbians is just patently false on, on the face of, of Proposition 8 itself. The, the, ba the basic notion 
notion here is do, do the people of the state have any right to, to continue to defend marriage as it has always been understood, uh, tied to the biological complementarity of the sexes, with at least a, a purpose of procreation and the rearing of children that are the offspring of, of that relationship? Uh, to say that there is no legitimate purpose and that it's completely unreasonable to adhere to something that has been around in every society and certainly in our country since the beginning, I, I think is a great stretch. And Judge, mm. Judge Reinhardt has staked the entire decision on that on that claim, well, which is me, just patently false. Well, let me ask David Boyce about the narrow scope of this ruling. Certainly you were hoping for more than just something that affects only California. Well, we think the reasoning of the, of the court does. And uh, let, let me just respond to the suggestion that somehow Proposition 8 was not involved uh, just gay and lesbian marriage, but somehow was against plural marriages. No one's ever suggested that. And to begin to try to defend Proposition 8 on the grounds that it's really directed at polygamy at this stage of the debate, I think, just shows desperation. That's not what the proposition was about. It was clearly targeted at gay and lesbian marriage. That's what all the advertisements were about. That's what all the publications were about. And that's what the court held was simply unconstitutional. And they, and they held it because the evidence was absolutely uncontradicted that this did not help procreation. It didn't help uh, uh, different sex marriage. There was no justification for this. Uh, as the court said, in order to believe that this served a rational purpose of procreation, you'd have to believe that people are going to procreate more um, if you don't have uh, gay marriage. There's, well, and they said that's simply not plausible. Well, there isn't ask, any evidence of that. No one suggested that. Let me ask Mr. Eastman about this rational basis test, which the courts applied in this case, in which they said what Mr. A version of what Mr. Boyce just said, which is that there was no rational basis for to to uh, impinge on someone's 14th Amendment rights. Well, the rational basis is the, is the lowest standard of review we have in constitutional law. It basically means is if there's any legitimate purpose furthered by the classification uh, that supports some uh, interests of government, uh, the, 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 the enactment of the legislature, or in this case, an initiative of the people, has to be upheld. Uh, and the notion that uh, we, we, we recognize, for example, that men and women procreate in a way that two men do not and two women do not. To, to create an institution that fosters that purpose uh, and, to, and to give it the benefits of society because there's some benefit to society from fostering that purpose clearly passes the rational basis test and it just belies reality and biology to suggest otherwise. Are you Mr. Eastman going to take this to the Supreme Court? Well, I'm not representing the proponents of the initiative, but I think w one of the things that all of the judges here agreed with is that the proponents do have the right to appeal to the Supreme Court, and I suspect they will. Uh, I think uh, David and I would agree that that uh, it's a close uh, call up at the Supreme Court. Most people think it's a 5-4 decision one way or the other with Justice Kennedy, likely the swing vote, and uh, I think we all expect we're going to end up there sooner or later. Do you agree on that, Mr. Boyce? I, I think we're going to do better than 5-4 in the Supreme Court. I think that this is an issue that under the Romer decision, uh, particularly given the careful way and the limited way that the court crafted this opinion, um, that it is four square under Romer. Uh, I don't think uh, the Supreme Court is going to go backward on this issue. I think it's going to go forward. And um, I'm not giving up on any justice on this issue. And I think it's definitely going to be better than 5-4 uh, in our favor. And finally, to both of you, do we think that this, this decision today now means, starting with you, Mr. Eastman, that there is going to be weddings that are about to happen, that there is going to, that, that the stay is now lifted and, and couples can marry? I, you know, I haven't gotten to the, to the last few pages of the 90-page majority opinion yet, but I understand that their stay remains in effect until the Supreme Court has a chance to, to decide whether they're going to take this case, in which case we won't have any change in the landscape in California in the short term. But I'd like to ask David if he'd like to wager a dinner next time we're together on a panel, if, uh, if the vote's 5-4 my direction or even only 5-4 his direction. Uh, he can answer that right I'll, after I'll he answers you, my I'll, question. I'll wager you that dinner. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's fine. And we settled that. What do you think about it? What do you think about a stay? Are people going to actually be able um, to get married before this thing works itself out? What the court did was continue the stay until its mandate um, uh, issues. Now, um, that mandate um, uh, is going to issue at some point. And if it's delayed because the uh, proponents of the proposition seek to have, uh, for example, a rehearing, we will go in and move to have. Uh, that stay uh, terminated. Uh, you now have 
a thoughtful and comprehensive district court opinion holding Proposition 8 is unconstitutional. You now have a Ninth Circuit a Court of Appeals decision holding that it's unconstitutional. It is time to allow people to get married in California. And would that create any chaos at all if for, for, for some reason oh. the court were to reverse itself again? Well, remember, uh, you had um, people getting married uh, before Proposition 8 uh, took place. That didn't create any chaos. Um, there's no reason that people ought to be deprived of their constitutional rights now that those rights have been affirmed by the Court of Appeals. Uh, it's not going to well, create any the, chaos. The, the, Mr. The reason would be the, the, the reason would be the right of the people to, to decide for themselves a very fundamental policy question about whether, whether we're going to continue to have an institution of marriage uh, that is rooted in biology with a purpose of procreation as it always has been, or whether we're going, we're going to allow the courts to mandate a dramatic alteration of that institution with potentially devastating consequences to society. So it's the right of the voters of this people, of the people of the state of California, uh, to, to have their judgment about the basic policy question at issue here affirmed. And if the Supreme Court uh, takes this up, I believe the Supreme Court would issue a stay until they have an opportunity to rule on that. John Eastman, David Boyce, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn.